Uh, hi, everyone, and welcome to our lunch talk. I'm Anna Jensen, a Doctor of Arts, artist, curator, researcher, and writer. And I am Elis Suanto, a curator producer with a designer background. Uh, firstly, we'd like to thank both the Finnish Cultural Institute in New York and Residency Unlimited for having us and supporting, <laughs> supporting our residency. It has been such a pleasure to be here. And also thank you to everyone who has joined today for this talk. We really appreciate it. We are both part of Foreign Kulturisato Collective, a collective we founded in 2013 and which provides the framework for the majority of our work together and also for projects we are presenting today in this talk. Our collective currently consists of three people, but in each project we work together with an invited group of artists, researchers and other professionals. During this talk, we are going to present our practice, what we have been doing and how we work, what we have been doing here in New York and during our residency, and some projects uh, we are working on at the moment. And we are hoping to leave time for discussion, so we'll finish early enough for questions. Um, for more than 10 years, our collective has focused on curating, researching, exhibiting, and strengthening the social role of contemporary art. Our activities include organizing exhibitions and events in changing locations, commissioning new site-specific works, writing papers and articles, doing studio visits and mentoring, teaching and publishing. Our partners have included cities, municipalities, institutions and other art professionals. The core values of our collective are equality and democracy in public spaces, and the ethical and ecological premises of art. We met while doing our MAs in a program where the aim was to combine practice and theory and teaching happened in relation to its surroundings. During our studies, we did artistic interventions and site-specific and research-oriented projects in public spaces and learned the importance of collaboration, both with other art professionals, but also with non-art agents as that is very much needed when working in the public space. These elements later created the co cornerstones for our practice. The cultural landscape has since changed, but many questions related to sustainability, accessibility, and collectivity that we found relevant then still seem equally relevant today. In the beginning, we didn't think about our collective as something that we will necessarily continue to work with, but it has since then become our medium where projects are considered artworks and one project is leading towards a new one. The core of a collective's practice lies inside specific art and collective projects. The projects are motivated by curiosity about different locations and research questions and by the desire to share these reasons and the results with artists and diverse audiences, to wonder first collectively, then together with others. The site specificity of the work means that art takes place in a particular site on its terms and in response to its specific characteristics. The realized exhibitions are spaces and situations where the artworks create roots through the environments and themes. The underlying premise is the idea of art as an experiential subversive force that enables both sharing and encounters, and each process is developing knowledge and experience gathered from previous projects. During the past 10 years, this has developed into a body of work in which curating is used as a method for creating possibilities for experimental and site-specific artworks to emerge in public spaces and diverse publics to be able to encounter art free and in unexpected locations. We create and produce exhibitions and commission new artworks, but among these, we want to establish long-term partnerships with artists and provide peer support. We do studio visits and create spaces for encounters, but also political and activist work and lobbying. 
one important aspect of our work is reflection and sharing what we have learned, even if there often is too little time for this. But this is done through articles and talks. Working in collaboration with organizations, institutions, universities, art and non-art professionals, cities and municipalities has been crucial to our practice. As a relatively small, independent and nomadic collective who doesn't have any permanent funding, we have benefited enormously through this collaborative method and its many forms, both material and immaterial. Different collaborations have also been essential as we always work in different geographical locations and often in places where we don't always have a per personal relationship with. Without these connections, our projects would ignore or wouldn't be able to consider the already existing work happening in that specific place. It doesn't mean our interests always align with each collaborator, and often our projects make unexpected things visible about that location. Sometimes it can happen through a conflict, but in any case, uh, which is in any case always present when working in public spaces. Through each project, we gain more information and understanding what are the limits and limitations of public spaces and how different artistic gestures can challenge them. This residency in New York has been an opportunity for us to reflect our 10 years old practice, but also to learn and to focus on the future. We have been able to research so many different ways of presenting art, all kinds of exhibition spaces, land art, site-specific art, artist-run spaces, large museums, foundations, public art, commercial galleries, and street art. We have met amazing and inspiring artists and curators and learned a lot, and these findings we are taking back home with us. Instead of just using terms like hospitality and care as empty buzzwords, we have come to learn sustainable ways of supporting artists and also environments and locations. Here in Residency Unlimited, we have witnessed the importance of strong network and multitude of ways helping their alumni. As we are most of the time the ones initiating projects and inviting others to join them and to work with us, it has been highly important to us to witness how care towards people is the most important aspect of sustainability. We have been able to experience a lot together, and I think this is an important aspect of our work. To experience and to provide experiences, especially without trying to predetermine what they are and where they will lead. This is related to the domino effect of projects and how they lead from one to another. We consider our projects as impulses that later can generate things we yet can't predict. Here we have wanted to expose ourselves to all kinds of encounters without predefined expectations. Our plan for the residency was to do research related to our practice and develop our upcoming projects. We have been able to research institutions that act in the intersection of durational and temporary practices, and also in the in-between of urban and rural spaces. Our emphasis has been on the site-specific and durational practices and institutions that have had a long-term commitment to their artists and, in, and invented different ways of support. The DIA Foundation and Ginati Foundation in Marfa, Texas, especially have been organizations who already have a history long enough to provide knowledge about this impact, both concerning the physical places and artists. This is especially interesting to us, considering that when we first started to work together uh, more than 10 years ago, it often happened in empty or abandoned places. At the time, we were optimistic about the possibilities and outcomes. Time and experience have made us a bit more critical about the combination of art, DIY, and temporary use of spaces. One of the places we knew we wanted to visit in New York was Governor's Island, as it reminds us of many locations we have been working in over the years. A unique location that has many overlapping interests and challenges. Often in such places, art is used 
for a certain period of time until the developers take over and art is pushed aside and ignored in the future steps. Are we speeding up gentrification? Do we always want to work in unhealthy houses and keep moving to more and more far away locations? And what is the long-term impact if we never stay in one place? We have, here we have seen how art can occupy spaces in developing neighborhoods and even impact the future of a whole town like Marfa. It has also been feeding into our thinking when we are navigating in between temporal, durational, and more permanent structures. The same questions of exotism, gentrification, and who benefits are present not only in different cities, different neighborhoods, and empty spaces, but also in the countryside where whole villages are emptying. Art has a lot of potential in these areas, but it is not without ethical questions. We do, do not yet have all the answers. More likely, we want to be open about our position that we know that we are merely visiting but that also these visits can be important. While working in, in the rural areas, I sometimes question my right to work in a place that does not belong to me. And this does not all, only concern uh, rural areas, but also some suburban neighborhoods that art has been inv invading as they are kind of considered as cheaper and more interesting and exciting than the city centers that we all already know. But we have also had many discussions proving that it is especially important for those growing up in sparsely populated areas to be able to see contemporary arts. We have got to know stories and memories of world-changing experiences when people who did not have art as part of their everyday life were able to encounter exhibitions or artworks that materialized their intuitive ideas or hopes and wishes about something maybe existing out there. We have found the concept of intimate outsider useful in this context. Admitting that we are not locals and that our practice is not rooted in the place, but more like rooted in nomadism moving and seeing places with new eyes, though intimate enough to be thoroughly observing them. This will also happen in the four new projects we are at the moment working on. The first project that is waiting for us happens this summer when we are creating an exhibition to Mustarinda, a remote residency in Northeast Finland. Mustarinda, as they themselves describe it, is a group of artists and researchers whose goal is to promote the ecological rebuilding of society, the diversity of culture and nature, and the connection between art and science. The Mustarinda Association preaches towards a post-fossil culture by combining scientific knowledge and exper experiential artistic activity. Our upcoming exhibition in the summer will take place in the nearby outdoors areas of the Mustarinda Presidency House. The surroundings consists of forests, hills, and a nature reserve that cannot be entered. Already, Mustarinda has initiated their own nature trail, introducing the unique site for visitors, including their residency guests. Their long term plan is to develop a more extensive site called Art National Park, which is a collaborative project for local organizations, businesses, and individuals. Because of its somewhat natural state, the region is currently heavily developed for wind power, which ultimately supports moving away from fossil fuels, but at the same time, likely it will destroy undeveloped areas and nature. 
It is hoped that in the future, the Art National Park will be a nationally and globally significant attraction and a brand responding to the rising megatrends in tourism. In addition to nature protection and highlighting the environmental values of the region, it will also serve as a platform for promoting local culture and cultural heritage, as well as high quality art. A multidisciplinary art program embedded in the idea of National Park is a significant factor for the cultural change in ecological, ecological reconstruction, and it highlights the importance by making contemporary art more accessible by bringing it to sparsely populated countryside. The third member of our collective who is not here today has also been working in Mustalinda Association years. This has provided us the needed insight and a long, some long-term perspective as well. The themes for this exhibition have already been explored in some of our previous projects, including hashtag holiday 365 realized in 2023, the exhibition which took place not so far from Mustavinda, looked at the concepts and intersections of work holiday, art, sports, and tourism. During and in between these two projects, we wrote an article for Mustarinda, already reflecting the themes of our upcoming exhibition and the potentiality of the art nature park. And the article can be also found here uh, in the Mustarinda magazine on the table. Active tourism and tourism dedicated to culture, nature, and adventures are getting more popular. But there are intersecting interests connected to this trend. Is nature wanted and accepted as such with its flying ants and mosquitoes? And are we still prepared to sacrifice untouched nature for new experiences? Or is it possible to have the right that can be accessed and consider this as a possibility feeding the imagination? Can our create paths that allow us to encounter things, but also to keep them as mysteries? Can we rail artworks? shifting their shapes over time, becoming visible, and then again merging with their surroundings, be realized in different environments. Can art act as a way of visiting places without over consuming them? And about the name, hashtag holiday365, uh, that sounds a bit funny, but it actually is a uh, translator from, from the, the kind of promoting sentence or or the the tagline that the city has that is hashtag lomalla which is kind of funny as the city is known for professional athletes who live and and work there and practice there so we kind of wanted to explore what is seen as work and what is seen as holiday and how um maybe like artists and, and professional athletes are often not considered as working uh, people in a way that that most professionals are considered in the yeah, society. And it's nearly a holiday that everyone is having. Yeah. So it's interesting considering the, like who lives in that place and how they are then treated. Um, and about the Mustarinda exhibition and, and where we are with that now, Last year, an open call was launched for artists working in the Nordic Baltic region. And at this point, we have selected a group of artists and who will start their two month residency at Mostarenda in May. And during this time, we will together explore the area further, choose the final location for the artworks and the exhibitions, and then present the artworks to the public in the form of an exhibition. And this project continues our process of working with fragile landscapes and studying how art can benefit these environments instead of consuming them. In, in Mustarinda, we also wanted to change the structure a little bit so that the exhibition is not in the end of the residence period, but there is then still two weeks for the artists and us kind of to reflect what happened and also see how the exhibition impacts their uh, 
being there and their work. And, and also the long term plan in yeah. the Art National Park. And this is a region that has been going on since uh, Sandstone exhibition in the picture um, in 2019. And the sandstorm exhibition took place on one of Finland's best known coastal areas and beach resorts. Uh, over the past decades, the area has witnessed a wide range of changing trends in tourism and leisure public events too large for the area and has served as a focal point for several interests. Both economic booms and recessions have affected tourism and left their marks on that specific environment. Sandstorm looked at the relationship between art and the environmental crisis as a global phenomenon, as well as trends in tourism, while also drawing attention to protected dunes and fragile landscapes of the area. In that exhibition, we wanted to make the delicate environment visible and more as more than just a sand beach. We wanted to support the initiative of protecting dunes and install art so that it would guide visitors to use the safest routes and raise environmental awareness. As a strategy, this could be defined by what a curator writer Lucy R. Lippard calls framing how can art activate local activities or local values, as Rupert asks. Also in the Body Biannual 2022 Visitors Exhibition, we studied the unique and protected natural area and the built environment next to it, but also the manifestation of memories and the politics of this, what we are entitled of and what kind of memories different places are making. Public art represents a public collective memory, but often only the memory of those in power. However, it can also challenge the dominant structure and cultivate alternative narratives of identity, as writer and educator Ivan Whelan writes in Senses of Place, Senses of Time, stating that public statues make an important contribution to its memory bank while focusing attention on specific places and events in highly condensed, fixed and tangible sites. As dynamic sites of meaning and memory that transform neutral spaces into sites of ideology, what ends. Spaces are rarely neutral and site-specific art and interventions are not neutral either. Sites guide what kind of art is exhibit, expected to be exhibited in, the, in them. In the city centers, we encounter prestige monuments. Um, of past and present sovereigns and remarkable contemporary art in large museums. In nature landscape, we experience traditional environmental arts and in suburbs or prefabricated housing estates, as is probably the better definition here, it is almost impossible to witness anything else than temporary participatory processes, at least in Finland, this is the case. Because of this, and as an effect of this, the city centers are places of collective official memories, while other places are regarded as marginal, coming from the margins, and aimed for the margins. The suburban memory is often valued less than the memory of the centers. In suburbs, the residents are not entitled the same permanence as those living in city centers. Art, as well as buildings or whole neighborhoods can easily be demolished, removed or replaced. Reconstructing what is exhibited and where is one way of challenging existing structures. And this is what we are going to be exploring into other upcoming exhibitions in two different locations. The first one opens in November in Helsinki in an artist-run space, and the second one in January 2025 in Seinäjoki Kunsthall, a museum where we were invited to respond to a recent process 
were yet another monument related to the Finnish military and war history was placed in a public space. What makes the case unusual is that the group of people who initiated, designed and realized this monument were able to do so without following any of typical protocols, permits or processes that are usually required when working in public space. This organization, a defense guilds federation, were able to ignore all official guidelines for permanent public art. The whole process, including uh, the monument, it, monument itself, didn't have any involvement of an artist, a curator, or any other art specialist. It's important to mention that most common public monument in Finland is a memorial or a statue somehow addressing war. You can find one in any given location. The small town we are talking about in this case already had seven war-related monuments all over the town. One of them is located in the yard of a local high school. When it comes to public monuments, young people, or future for that matter, are hardly ever considered or somehow present. In 2017, we realized an exhibition titled The Truth About Finland, where artist Erno Erik Raitanen presented a map of public sculptures in Helsinki. The map categorized public works by gender of the artist and gender of the person represented in the artwork, as well as human and non-human sculptures. 21% of the sculptures were created by female artists, 10% of the memorials to national hero statues were dedicated to women. Fishes, eight, horses, seven, and bears, six, mm -hmm. appear more often in statues than significant women, as Raiden and wrote in the exhibition catalog. The Truth About Finland exhibition came about as a reaction to the official celebration of the Centenary of Independence in Finland. And this means we learned here um, that Finland as a nation is younger than the New York subway. And we have also learned Finland is also more quiet than the subway and more boring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this official celebratory program neglected the fact that Finland has always been a multicultural and multilingual country. And we wanted to highlight the diversity and incoherence of the history of the nation. When Finland gained its independence, artists and academics were deployed to build a cohesive culture or at least an idea of one. In our project, we wanted to invite these same groups to revisit and reconstruct these ideas of nations and nationalities, identities, and so-called objective histories. Artist collective Honka Saloniemi Virtanen challenged the idea of national monuments and memorials as merely visual objects and created a scent of a nation stored in a glass bottle and exhibited in the gallery. During the process, we discussed if it is even possible to process an ideology from the inside, and if so, under what conditions and what kind of vocabulary to use. In the show, the group substituted vocabularies with smells, which in fact can be an even more direct approach, odors taking a direct route to the limbic system and the regions related to emotions and memories. And artist Felicia Honkasalo, a member of this group, who is at the moment doing a residency in Santa Fe, traveled to Marta with us for a research trip. This is one example of the continuation we want to support and how relationships with artists can develop, change, and continue even long after the project that originally brought us together. Mutually, in the future, we are looking forward to including artists and or other professionals we have met here into our projects elsewhere. This upcoming exhibition addressing monuments is slightly different from most of the projects we are doing. As instead of commissioning works, we will be working and curating already existing works or adaptations of these. 
because it will happen in the middle of the winter. We won't be able to work outdoors and there will be no public program or interventions in the public space. Instead, we want to explore the question of monuments and memorials a bit further with the working group and therefore the exhibition will expand from Seinäjoki also to an exhibition space in Helsinki. Together with the same artists, we will present the processes, the considerations of public artworks that have not yet taken their final forms or even the failed ones. We want to keep the possibilities for both failure and experimentation open. And in this case, the method for this is organizing two parallel events with slightly different emphasis. In 2023, we traveled to a symposium in Lund, Sweden, and participated in the Fountains, Failures, Futures, the Afterlives of Public Art Symposium. The symposium, initiated by a research project by Valand University, stated how research and discussion about public art frequent, frequently focuses on conditions of emergency and production for public works. Fountains, failures, futures started at the other end, thinking about the afterlives of public art in relation to processes of decline, decay, acts of reparation and reimagination, transformation and change. The question of space, place and belonging is also present in our newest initiative. Um, while we're here, we just received a grant for piloting a project that at the moment goes with the name Kotiledon in Finnish it's uh, circulated. Codiledon refers to the embryonic seed leaf of a plant that may only last for days or passes longer, but they store the nourishment for the developing seedling. In this project, the plan, plan is to nourish the idea of public places and public art as something that also belongs to children and young people, and as something they can have an impact today and in the future. As the plan will be tested in both urban and rural areas, the idea is to create possibilities for belonging and participation depending on the needs in different places. Together with young people, we want to explore possibilities that reach into the future instead of merely memorizing the past. Like many other projects have done, this plan started from curiosity and frustration. Many of the artworks, monuments and memorials that are visible in our everyday life do not eventually represent most of us today, nor the values or hopes or wishes. They map the past instead of opening perspectives to the future. In many public places, there seems to be more space for old men in bronze and stone than for young people. And in this project, we are curious to hear about the participants' perceptions on the future, but also about monuments. What are the monuments we haven't yet been able to imagine? Can we create monuments that will grow older together with their creators? And how can these monuments respond and react to times and situations still unknown? And these are maybe the questions that we would like to discuss with you. And um, if you want to have a look, there are some books and catalogs related to our projects. And, and we are also going to go for drinks today at four o'clock. If you want to join for a more casual uh, talk or discussion. I can't remember the name of the place. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're interested, yeah. you can find out. It's nearby. <laughs> Thank you Thank for you listening. So And if you have any comments or questions or anything, we are. Uh... Yeah, I think I have a question. Uh, for example, uh, when you do your projects and or participate in science specific installations, uh, how do you find the 
uh, that's false from the public? Do they really engage or do they hesitate or how do you adjust their, you know, how do you welcome them or they might be uncomfortable if you talk about the public? Do you have like a specific research or study about this? That's a very interesting. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because I wasn't like when I was still working as an artist, I wasn't at all interested in public or, or their responses or the reactions. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know if it's that horrible thing to say, but that's how it was. So it was really interesting then we, when we started working in public places to see how people really that they are curious what's happening and they really want to come like kind of. They want to talk about that, but also that then that sort of creeps gives opportunities for all kinds of discussions. And then they really want to express like all kinds of feelings and things that are in their mind about the, the situations or, or the city or whatever. So it's kind of this route to all kinds of observations about different locations. But but then we have also come to realize that we can't control it, that it's like you can never predict what happens. Like it's even in different suburbs that are next to each other, like one can be super open to all kinds of happening and the next one can be really hostile and hate everything you do. So it's really difficult to, to know beforehand, but then we have come to kind of consider all kinds of uh reactions valuable and we can learn from them but and something that we didn't actually mention or or talk about in the presentation is that since the projects that we are doing are short term uh which in in this case it means the duration is usually less than two weeks sometimes it can be an extended weekend as well um but that means that we are always there uh our group the, the core collective is there every day uh during the opening hours and and that is very much a a like a crucial part of of the things that we do that's why we don't uh have interns or other people there mediating or even like hired uh help to talk about the projects because we want to be there to also be able to talk about uh, the questions or the feedback or 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 just have have the conversation, so we know then exactly what are the conversations, and we can also follow up with them, and we can still impact uh, how the engagement with the with the locals or visitors are during that that process. And maybe one more thing to add is that that it's also about like how we choose the locations that there are always sites that are more interesting for people than, than other sites that if there is an empty house that has been empty for a long time and people know it they are really curious when you you kind of do something in that and they are able to see it and i think that's like one of the the main successes in our practice was the visitors in that sense that we had a lot of public program that where we were able to to somehow like have both the the local residents and then the people who are interested in art or urban planning to come into the same events and also start discussing things together and that was really amazing and of course that doesn't happen uh, every time no <laughs> almost never you also had a question <laughs> um uh, I have two questions, but maybe I can um, put them together because uh, there are aspects of the same uh, problems. So uh, the first is like, um, can you tell us what is one downside of being an outsider and what is uh, instead a positive aspect of being an outsider and why you choose to be Normand, and uh, if the temporality of your project is part of this choice, like if doing ephemeral works have a completely different meaning of doing permanent and monuments like that. So um, how, I don't know if you want to respond. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think in some ways our position in 
in the projects that we have been doing in the past 10 years, which is more than 20 or roughly 20, it has also changed a little bit how we are positioned in, in each project because we have been changing the locations. So we also come from different backgrounds, including with the, with the artists, uh, professionals that we invite to work with. So we also always try to take into consideration that what is uh, sort of the whole group in terms of where they are coming from, where they are working in, and what is their knowledge or not their knowledge about the, the, the location. I guess the maybe the negative thing of working in somewhere that you don't know is that you automatically like feel that you are the outsider even from the from the beginning and of course that positions you in in a way in relation to the community and how how some of the conversations just can happen and how can you answer them how can you understand them how can you sort of be in, in in contact or even find the contact with the people so even to think about the sort of the outreach process but no, no, yes, yeah, yeah, so yeah, we can also about the practicalities. I think that you always need to start from the beginning, like everyone you meet or all the like collaborating parties or funding parties, it's always that you need to kind of introduce yourself and Absolutely. start from the beginning. But then I think that the the positive, like one of for me at least the the biggest positive aspect is that it's exciting i think that it's always like really exciting to go to different locations and find new new places and new artists and new people and new audiences and i think that then that kind of excitement that that then you can share that that also the audience becomes like kind of really excited about their own uh, neighborhood and and also that the artists are more exactly. sometimes more curious to work in and i think that what we learned is that mo like many things in Finland happen in Helsinki. Of course, it's the biggest city. And so there is a lot of competition. And also I think that that sometimes make artists, um, I don't know how to put it, but so that they sort of want to do a bit more like safe things or somehow like, um, uh, somehow it felt that when, when we, work somewhere else that they have more freedom and they are more brave to try out things that they maybe wouldn't in other places and that has been really interesting to yeah. see and then one positive thing is also to think all the past collaborators that we've had if they are locally embedded and they are working on the site and somehow our involvement quite often at least based on the feedback also from them directly has been quite sort of positive that someone else is entering into that conversation and is somehow excited about the work that they are doing and we are inviting them to work with us quite often that's uh, the way it goes since we are more often maybe inviting someone to work with us than we have mm. been sort of inviting uh, to do a project um, so for them it has been really great that someone else is excited about this local knowledge that they have and then perhaps it will take different forms and how it is then mediated not just for the public but also perhaps to their collaborators like i'm thinking for example like city structures uh the the exhibition that we did on the beach sandstorm we were working super closely with the environmental department of the city and they were sort of alone with their vision and with their work that they were doing. And there wasn't so much uh, people or working in the city, like responding to, to what they were doing. And then somehow like our project became this new platform for them as well. Um, and that was really nice. And then about the like permanent monuments versus the short term, I think that like, that would be a topic for a whole uh, new talk, <laughs> like yeah. how to consider a permanence or like long term, term or short ter term impacts. But but I think that this is exactly what we want to study in the, the new project, like how to, I think that what how we see your work is that even if they are like short in duration, but then the impact continues and kind of that they just like, 
create new new ideas and new thoughts and new projects. But but in in the new project, we really want to kind of see if we can create these like seeds for artworks that then can be developed through the years and what kind of works those can be. And still so briefly the, about yeah. that sort of being nomadic within our, mm. our practice. Again, it would be too much to start to talk about Finnish structures in terms of like funding and, and what is sort of the existing or what has been the existing cultural field. And especially when we started in, in roughly in 2010, 13, very much the majority of the funding was going to support spaces and, and sort of galleries, institutions, even artists from spaces were taking money from the artists who wanted to exhibit in the space instead of the artists being the ones who were getting paid. So this was definitely something that had a huge influence to how we started to work, like why we started to use these abandoned locations and sort of taking over them because otherwise it was almost impossible to exhibit or, or work uh, as an artist, as a curator, especially when we and most of the time the artists that we were working with were in the beginning of their careers. So they didn't get invitations to, to shows and to big museums. And the gap is, is quite huge still today between like artist run initiatives and then big institutions. So somehow also trying to navigate with that like what is lacking on the field and what is uh what is it that we can sort of bring to the cultural landscape that didn't exist or and therefore we could be supporting artists and different practices as well and hopefully we've done some of that um, before you started the project you know, you know, collective. I guess your view on Finland was different because now you're just discovering the country artistically but like more of it deeply maybe you discover like dark things or how the how some, some municipalities work or how the you know the sociality is maybe uh, different than you thought about before. So I'm really curious about how your relationship with your own country and all this exploration that brought you I guess a new perspective on it. Yeah, do you want me to answer this? Because for me, it is a learning process, and I'm still learning. I I have to say that coming from from Helsinki region, um, I didn't know Finland that much, and it was I'm ashamed like how little of the art scene elsewhere I knew. So it has been super interesting to get to see all these like amazing initiatives happening all over Finland. But also what you said about the municipalities and that I, I think that it has been really great to, to learn so much and then also be able to bring the knowledge from different municipalities to other municipalities and, and see that and also like coming from the municipalities and the city structures to the artist associations and and they are, they there are so many different cultures in Finland and and there are not that many uh, people who are working um, across Finland. So I think that there should be more people who could like then uh, take the knowledge from one place to another. And it definitely, like as, as mentioned, that we have collaborated with so many uh, cities, municipalities, like official sort of structures in a way. Part of our work we consider is also to like make somehow that knowledge visible. We didn't so much now concentrate on that on, on this talk, but oftentimes that is also a reason why we are presenting in, in, in seminars or in some other context. Somehow like what we have learned from that and how is it possible to operate in, in public space and what are perhaps some of those conflicts that we've had and what we have learned from them or how it has been sort of impacting the way we work. So we have definitely learned learned a lot and there are similarities, but then also like you see the differences as well. One of the key things working in smaller places and, and the smaller municipalities is of course that they are so much smaller and then you can easily have connections or find those right connections when sort of needed 
whereas in city, which is the capital of Helsinki, the process is when you actually want to do something that is not in a gallery space or in a museum, can take years uh, to, to get to a certain point um, to use one space or even to find the right person that you sort of need to talk to. Whereas then in, in small towns and cities, like someone just knows someone or you can just go and find them uh, personally and then things move forward like quite easily in the sense. And it's also like about then like how to share and mediate the knowledge of, that we have. And we, we mentioned lobbying. And for us, it means, for example, uh, that that in Finland, you can write these kind of election goals as an organization. So before elections, we write these like kind of wish list, like what could be done. But that's also a way of publishing sort of what we have learned and what could be the next steps for for cultural politics to how they could be improved. And I think that that has been kind of a useful tool then to what to do. Definitely. And the catalogs are quite mm. important aspect of our work as well when thinking about exactly this knowledge that we sort of gain from each project. Like how do we also mediate that and bring like some of those moments more visible also beyond the exhibition. Um, thinking about the, the catalogs, it feels like um, it will also allow you in the future to understand what was feasible for you as a group, but also for uh, the context around you, what is possible and, and maybe acceptable and what won't be. So maybe you can, you can have an, an exhibition in you know, 20 years to come and talk about this, this line of, of, uh, of time, right? That's a um, really nice idea. Yeah, I would like you to comment on, there was a moment when, when uh, you mentioned about not having art professionals, and uh, I was relating this to another comment uh, when you said the younger people were more open and so on. I feel the master class and the idea of one true source against everybody else is is complicated. Do you think the, the com communal um, aspect of your nomadic practice can can address this? The profession. Um. I'm not sure I understand the the idea of of the, of having professional uh, professionals from art who really have hold the truth and people not being uh, able to to relate then because at at a certain point I'm trying to talk about two uh, two different points that you mentioned. Uh, the second moment you're talking about uh, young people when you do your programs being very uh, feeling okay to have questions and interact. And I wonder if this is related to how people are professional or, or not, you know, in terms of how they present themselves. If you have that, this experience. Mm, well, oftentimes uh, we have also been working in, in this kind of like synergy that there are sort of art professionals in, in the sense that they are perhaps in the beginning of their career or a little bit in the emerging state, but then also working already together with the students and then additional sort of sort of people that we have and, in, the, visitors. and the visitors. The people who are yeah, and what about them? They are people from the community or also both. That was exactly what we were like uh, so happy about that because it doesn't always happen, and it doesn't always happen that they are happy about the project. So that's why the 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 last banner we did was a success. That it's really like both the people from the art world and then the locals uh, came and and interacted and that was really nice. 
Um, but it has also been nice now in the recent years when we haven't been working in Helsinki, and then there has been some Helsinki art professionals coming to those more remote locations. Mm -hmm. So then it starts to be a little bit like sort of both ways that we we get some some people leaving Helsinki as well, which is not so common when so many things happen there at all times. Thank you. I think that that we can just like close it up and then have more casual. Uh, yeah, we'll and thank you here. for the question. Yeah. We'll be here.